Okay, we're on Shabbat, Perak Chaf Bet, Mishnah Gimel. Third mission, the 22nd chapter of Esachet Shabbat. We're going to talk about something relevant to opening cans on Shabbat, opening packages. Mishnah says the following, Shover Adam et chavit le'echol emena grow garot. The person, if he has figs in a chavit, in a jug, and it's, um, now this is, I don't, it's, it's very difficult to know exactly what kind of jug it was. But I, I just, this is actually a jug they found at the Israel Museum. They have no idea what was in it. But then when they, would, they, when they would produce dried figs, they would stick them in jugs for storage. And then they would put a seal on the top. I'm going to assume that this is some kind of seal that they tried to make the seal or like the original jug. This actual um, um, jug that we're looking at here is from the times actually of Bayit Rishon, of the first base of Migdash. Nonetheless, so let's use that as our example. So the Mishnah says, I can break the chavit, I can break the jug to eat the grogrot inside. As long as I'm not intending, the problem is like this. When they would, where is my, where am I, my jug? Here we are. Okay? When, I, when, they, when they, they would take the, when they make the jug, they would seal it. It would be permanent seal because then you would open it. When you would open it, then you would open it and eat the food out from inside of it. And the jug was like pseudo disposable. We're going to see what Malambi says the jug was kind of disposable. So therefore, when you would open it, you want to be able to keep the food in the jug but continue to eat it. So the question is like this. When you're opening it, are you opening it in such a way that, I'm, that the thing is reusable, i.e., will you cut it down here and then you'll use it for, I don't know, plants or washing or whatever? Or are you going to cut it at the top and just try to keep the food in, you know, to preserve the food, but afterwards it's not going to be as usable? So the Mishnah says, I can break the chavit as long as it's not kaven la'aso kli, as I don't intend to make a kli from it. So I don't, you know, so the bartender says, la'aso la pen na'et, make a good mouth for it. So if I don't want to open it, let's say I don't want to open it, so let's go back to my jug. I want to make a hole in here. Imagine it was wider also, if the, if the cover was wider. I want to make a hole in here instead of opening it entirely. The Divrei Rab Yudah. Rab Yudah says you cannot make a hole in the stopper of the jug. Okay? Because uh, rather have to take it all off. Okay, just so you know, the Bartunu has a girsa that it's Rabbi Yossi and not the Chachamim. So can I make a hole in the, in the stopper, in the, in the cover? That's a machloki between Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Yossi. Velo yikvena mitzida. But even Rabbi Yossi, who says, look at the Bartunu, even Rabbi Yossi, who says you can make a no kevita magufa, you can make a hole in the covering, lo shari ele lamala. He only permits you to make the hole atop. Berosha magufa. Okay, at, the, at the top, because that's not the normal way of doing it. But on the side, I guess sometimes they would make a hole on the side. So it would be like an opening. So for example, this jug, if they had wine in it, here we go, if they had wine in it, they'd want to make a hole on the side, not a hole at the top, because then bugs could get in or whatever, a hole in the side, and then you could pour out of the jug. So then you're making a nice little spout, and that you're not allowed to do. So that's what the mission says. Even, even the Chachamim or Rabbi Yossi, who says, you're matir, if there was a hole in the jug, well, how would they seal it? The best way to seal it would be to pour wax over it, okay, and that would seal it. Mimareach is a tolada. Mimareach is smearing. Okay, Mimareach is a tolada of memachek. Memachek is smoothing. In the Mishkan, the, the malacha of memachek was if they had skins, you could use my skin, they, the skin had, had like hairs on it, and they would memachek, they would they would rub it down. They would smooth it down. So one tolada of that is the notion of smearing, taking hot wax and smoothing it over, or taking cream and smearing. That's considered mimachek. That's the problem. Taking lipstick or lip balm and smearing it, making it smooth. So similarly, if you have a, if you have an open bottle, you can't seal it with wax. They obviously didn't have didn't have the the incredible plastics that we have today. Amr Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda said, There was an event, a story that was brought to the attention of Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakai in Arav, I was in a place, about a person who, was, who, 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 who smeared the wax over the bottle, over the jug. And he said, I am concerned from the possibility that he was violating an Yisudio Raita of Machek, and maybe he's Chayav a Korban Chatat. Let's stop for a minute and look at the halakha lama ase as it's brought down by Rav Malamed. Rav Malamed quotes this, this Mishnah exactly in the topic of Tichat Kufsa Ochimirim, opening cans, cans for preserving. That's the Kufsa Ochimirim is the Hebrew term for cans. He writes, 
מותר לפתוח בשבת כבשורת שימור אם היא פילס שאתה יכול לפתוח קאנס כדי לראות מה שאתם. שהואיל והם נועדו לשימוש חד פעמי, since they are used once, they are designed to be used once, אין להם חשיבות של כלי, they don't have, but they're not considered a כלי, and they're like קליפת אגוז, they're like the shells of a nut, just like you can open a nut, you can open a קופסה, you can open a can, and eat what's inside, and he says, how do we know this? וכן למדנו במשנה, we learn from our משנה, שובר אדם את החבי לכל מימן גרו גרו, you're allowed to break the חבי, that's exactly what we just learned in our משנה, you can break the jug, similar to breaking the חבי. And he says, many say that he was talking about a very kind of weak chavit, uh, weak jug. It was a one-time use. So he uses our Mishnah exactly to, to use this as an example of opening a can, which is similar. You're not using it. You, most people, when they open a can, they want to finish the food. That they can do. They don't have to throw the food out right away. Rabbi Lama doesn't feel like you have to throw the food when you're done eating it. But you're not going to, most people today, they don't save their cans and then use it to store other food. I'm not going to read the entire piece here. If you want to see Ka'alacha, remember we're only a Mishnah Shir, you should ask your rabbi. But it's, it's very fascinating to me to you see this example, and we learn it directly from the Mishnah that we learned today. We'll stop here. If you have any comments or questions, as always, email me at rspolter at gmail.com. It's just so happens tonight is the night of Yom HaShoah. So we'll dedicate our learning to the memory of the Shishan de Leon, the six million who were brutally murdered by the Nazis. Our Mishnah, the learning of our Mishnah should be an Eloi Nishmatam. We'll stop here.